All right, guys, not going to lie. I've stood right here at this bench for probably an hour to an hour and a half trying to figure out what I'm going to make today. I say that because I don't typically make things just for the sake of making them or trying to be entertaining. They are things that I truly want to go fish with. So I've been running through ideas of things that have been working for me in the past, things that haven't, things that I want to try, different color patterns, techniques, this, that. You know how fishermen are. We just overthink and overanalyze everything. Well, the old buzzard mold you guys have seen on the channel before. We actually have some right there. I've been doing really good fishing those on top water, just throwing it weightless, bringing it across the top of the water, kind of like a buzz toad. Well, just like what you see hanging up, I'm typically just throwing all white or all black. Those are my confidence colors. I feel like I can take those out and get bit wherever I go. Well, the last fishing trip I just went on, a buddy of mine, I don't remember what type of frog he was throwing, but it was just kind of that bluegill, like panfish colored frog and was doing really, really good on it. Well, perfect timing, 8-Bit Baits just released their Pixie Dust powders, and they actually have some of these panfish colors in their new Pixie Dust lineup. So I thought, why not make some more of these buzz to or the old buzzards in some of these new colors that we have, and then I can take them out and see how they do. So I need to start mixing up some plastic and getting everything ready. We're going to get this first cup cooked up, and then I'll meet you back for the color build. So here we go with our first cup of plastic. We are going to take this sunfish color in the pixie dust lineup, and we are going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of this pixie dust because I do want the pixie dust to kind of be the driving color of all of this. So let's start out with one eighth of a teaspoon and get all that mixed in. I'm not going to add the black and like the base color until after because it's it's just cool to see the effect of adding that color after you get all this mixed in now this already looks like a really cool color by itself but it is still extremely translucent so adding that black is going to make this color shift really pop along with making it a little bit more opaque and not quite as see-through so this is looking really good right there. And now what we're going to do, like I mentioned, we're just going to take our black. I'm going to start with five drops at first. I don't know how many I want to add all together. So let's just start with five. I know Michael made a video on his channel where I think he used 15 drops of black. I don't remember what color he was using. And that looked really, really good. Look how much that changed from just when I had it by itself. It was very like that orangey gold color. And then when I added that black, you get all of that green. The amount of shift in that was pretty insane. I think this one actually on the website showed this color in both forms by itself and with the backing. So you kind of get that ahead of time when you get ready to order it you kind of see the effects but that was actually really cool i think i want to add let's go with about five more drops of black it's still a little thin so i just want to make it a little bit thicker and again i'm doing this because i plan on fishing these weightless on top of the water so i don't want it to be too translucent because i feel like anything you're going to be fishing like this, like on top of the water, you want it to be a little more saturated because you want them to be able to see it. Especially if you're fishing in direct sunlight, a super translucent bait, they're going to see the disturbance on the water, but they may not see the bait itself all that well. So I think that looks pretty good. Now, one thing I'm going to do to this, just because I can't help myself, let me find it. So we're going to add some of these purple crushed rupees to this. Just because any bluegill pattern, uh, or bluegill, sunfish, anything in that line, I like to add a little bit of purple. So I'm going to take my quarter teaspoon, but I'm only going to go with about three quarters of a scoop or so, about that much. A little over half. I just really like adding purple to my bluegill patterns, because a lot of the bluegill around me, when you actually look at them up close, they have a lot of almost like that purple highlight effect to their body. So we're gonna take a, oh man, that looks awesome. 
So I haven't used any of these before. This is the first time using Pixie Dust or the Crushed Rupees. So that purple looks incredible. It's almost like... It reminds me of like the Sparkle Flake, but better. You don't have to worry... I, I would assume you don't have to worry about the heat sensitivity quite as much. And then this, the Crushed Rupees, it's not a consistent size of flake. So you kind of get that little variation in there. And it looks really cool. So that looks really good. We're going to make sure our plastic is at the right temp. We're going to inject this in the first mold and check it out. We are cooled off and ready to take a look at these. Look at that. That color looks incredible. Let's get these out of the mold to get some of that reflection off and take a close-up look. The amount of shiftiness in that color is pretty crazy. So you can see down here in these thinner appendages, you still get a lot of that like orangey gold look, like what we were seeing prior to mixing the black. But then in the thicker body, you get all of that green coming out. And those crushed rupees looking like that purple is phenomenal. It's like just the right amount to kind of break up that solid color in the body. I think that color is going to be really, really good. So my intentions were to fish this on top water, like I had mentioned. But I think that just on a regular Texas rig or even cut it down and use it as a jig trailer would look really, really good as well. But so far, the... Pixie dust colors are one for one for me. That color is incredible. So there we go with the first one. And now the second one, we're going to do a laminate. We've got our next two cups ready to go. So for this top color, we're actually going to go with bluegill. And we're going to go back to our eighth teaspoon. I'm going to do a full scoop with this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and mix it in, and then we'll add our black and kind of watch that color shift come to life. So let's get all of this stirred in. And then I kind of have an idea for the belly color. I have no idea if it's going to work, but I hope it does. So that stuff. So one thing I do want to touch on, just because this is the first time well, technically, second time I've ever used Pixie Dust. This stuff mixes extremely well. I feel like the amount of stirring that I'm having to do to get it completely stirred in is a lot less than other materials. So, pretty impressed with how easily that mixes in. So, there we go with that. And then for our black colorant, I'm actually going to go, again, just black. I'm going to go straight to 15 drops like what Michael did in his video because I want this one to be a little more saturated. So there is our 15 drops and we'll watch this come to life. Oh yeah, that looks really, really good. So it... It's similar to that sunfish color, but you don't get as much of that orange, like the orangey, coppery looking color that you get in the sunfish. This is definitely more of the green. It almost looks like a little bit of blue color shift around the edges. It's a really cool looking color there. And I'm going to add flake at the very end, um, mostly because I have no idea what flake I'm using yet. Now for the belly color. What I want to try is I want to go back to the sunfish color. I'm going to take my 16th and I'm going to do just a heaping scoop with the 16th. So it's honestly probably closer to an eighth than it is anything, but my eighth teaspoon already has a bunch of stuff on it. But what I want to try to do, so a lot of bluegill colors kind of have that orangey belly looking color. So I want to try to use this one just by itself. Because you can see if we don't add any of the black, you get all of that orange look to it. So I want to try to just leave it like it is. 
and see how that works and acts as a belly color. And I think the shiftiness of this playing off of that top color are going to look really, really good. So it looks like we've got all that stirred in. Now I need to figure out what color flake I want to add to this. We are back. I reheated these up just because it took me a while to figure out flake. So I'm going to go a 16th teaspoon of our medium 0.04 black in both sides. And this is more just kind of for texture than it is anything. And then I'm not going to mix that in just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with the purple crushed rupees on the top because that looked so good in the last one that I can't help myself. So if you can see that, we're going back to a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to go a full scoop on this one with my quarter teaspoon onto the top side. And then what I was thinking about for the bottom, sticking with the whole 8-bit baits theme, is I'm going to add some of this Triton to the bottom. Now I'm going to take my 8th teaspoon, and it's just going to kind of be a heaping scoop of that. I think that's going to add a lot of really good texture to the bottom. So now let's start mixing these in and see what it looks like. I think those are going to play out that Triton and the uh, Sunfish, I think are going to play off of each other really, really well. And then that black, like I said, it's just kind of there for texture and adding black is going to help that color shift kind of come out even more. So there we go with the bottom. Now for the top. These purple crushed rupees, I have a feeling I'm going to have to order a couple more jars of this because if it's anything like my uh, sparkle flake addiction, I'm going to be adding this to pretty much everything. So that looks really good. As you can see, my plastic's already cooling off a little bit. So I'm going to throw these back in the microwave and get them back up to an even operating temp. We're going to inject them into a bait and see how it looks. All right, guys, the mold is cooled off, so I made some of the danglers again because some of the other bite for me that's been super consistent is the bladed jig bite. So why not make some more trailers for that? And holy crap. That did not disappoint. Let me get the light box out and show you guys this thing up close. I mean, at a certain point, these fish are going to start pressing charges. That's just not even fair. The amount of shiftiness in that that color, it's I don't even know what to say to be honest. Like what I thought would turn out good in my head turned out even better. So you can see that sunfish color on the bottom is like the perfect blend. Look right there how it looks super translucent. So a lot of bluegill, they have that kind of whitish clearish colored belly within the orange kind of like highlights throughout it and then the top of that with all that green and blue shifty with that um the purple crushed rupees just absolutely incredible guys that on the back of a bladed jig does not stand a chance that's gonna get smashed if i was a fish i'd hit that there you go, guys. That is my first time using both the Crushed Rupees and the Pixie Dust from 8-Bit Baits. I will leave their website linked down below. And one of the things I wanted to touch on with these powders and um, the Crushed Rupees, a lot of people were hesitant when they came out with the Hollow Shift powders because of the price point. It is kind of a steep price point up front. However, I truly believe it is worth it. But I also understand the hesitation with some of the people out there because it's hard for us to capture on camera the actual color shift that you see in person. Well now, definitely try out these pixies. I've only used sunfish and bluegill, so my recommendation, pick up one of those as you just saw. It's at a much lower price point. These come in at $19.99 for a container. Crushed rupees are only $14.99. Pick one of these up. If you're hesitant at all, get one color 
try it out, and I promise you when you see it in person, you will see why we all recommend these products to you. They're just absolutely incredible. And I want to say a huge thank you to Michael over at Bait Chuckin' because his 8-Bit Baits company is filling a huge gap that we have had in the lure making community. We now have a lot of really cool color shifting effects that still remain relatively translucent with the pixie dust and then extremely translucent with the hollow shift powders. And then with the crushed rupees, you get that kind of sparkle glitter effect without having to worry too much about heat sensitivity. Because I know he talks a lot about guys that use um, shooting star systems and they're having their, temp their plastic at full working temperature for a long period of time. You don't have to worry about any of the color bleed or any of the um, flake actually like scorching or burning and the effect that you get from these like it's just something you can't get with traditional glitter because glitter is all you get small medium large whatever size glitter whereas this stuff it's all kind of random and it just looks a little more natural in my opinion so absolutely outstanding products just like everything else that we have tried from them so thank you again to michael for bringing all of these to us and as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you liked the video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one. But wait, there's more. So for any of you that follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that I caught my new personal best bass. It weighed in right at 932. And the amount of messages that I got and people wanting to know, what did you catch that bait on? I figured I'd make a little video here at the end because... Um, I would assume the majority of people that follow along on Instagram and everything that we do, hopefully you're still watching this video. So in the last video, we made these six inch finesse worms. This is just that margarita mutilator color. This is the exact worm I made in that video. You can see it's all torn up. I, found, I had the exact worm that I caught that fish on. I actually cut the whole thing off of my rod. Um, I don't know. I've always had a habit of anytime I catch my personal best fish, I cut that bait off no matter what it is and I save it. Just something I do. But anyway, that is that six inch finesse worm, Margarita Mutilator. This is a owner cover shot HD hook in a two watt, throwing like a 12 to 14 inch liter roughly with a 316 ounce weight. Nothing crazy. 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, I was actually throwing this on my jig rod because, as you know, I was fishing on the Delta, and the Delta is a very grassy um, fishery with a lot of structure. So if you're throwing this on a traditional drop shot out there and you catch a decent fish, fish is going straight to the grass or wrapping you around a log, you're breaking off game over. So I typically go with the power shot and I'm not worried about the heavier line because it's usually a little bit dirtier water. Like that day, I only had maybe two feet of visibility at most, probably closer to like a foot and a half. But I threw this little worm in right next to a log. Always free spool your bait when you're throwing next to structure. If you click your reel as soon as the bait hits the water, that bait's going to pendulum away from whatever you're throwing to. So when it hits the water, free spool it. It'll go straight down. Um, that fish hit right out from underneath the edge of a big log that was laying down from the bank. And I was fortunate enough to be able to fight that fish and get it to the boat, get it in the boat. Uh, I took extremely good care of that fish i immediately filled the live well turned the aerator on got that fish right back into the water um, in the live well before i did anything once the fish kind of had a moment to kind of settle recover a little bit i got it out just long enough to take a picture get a weight on it and i put it right back into the water next to that log that i caught it off of uh, a lot of people were asking if i was going to get it mounted no if I ever get a big fish like that mounted, I will just get a replica. I'm not going to actually mount that fish. I'm going to put it right back in because those are the genetics that you want in your fishery. But I figured with how many people wanted to know how I caught that fish, I would just show you exactly what I was using. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the things that you see me making on this channel are things that I'm trying. Like this is the worm that I saw. So I, this video came out Friday morning, Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. I caught the biggest fish of my life on that exact bait. So just figured I'd share with you guys. I'm not, I don't keep secrets. You can message me and ask me anything you want. I'm an open book. I'll tell you my honest opinions on whatever I've got. So I appreciate all you guys that have stuck around to the end to watch this. That is my quick little story on how I caught my fish. Thank you guys again for watching. We'll see you on the next one.